Impact Range CPAP, Neve, non invasive ventilation helmet, uh, DMAX, the, the total face mask, and the Easy Vent, which is the. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the, 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 the nebulizer. Yes, the normal video. See, uh, the point is that using cold ventilators, you can adjust any part of this. So if you really know how to play with the ventilator, you can do everything. If you, if you work, for example, with a V60 on respironics mm -hmm. and you need to play with the inspiratory trigger, you cannot because the device will take this decision by itself. So if everything works well, that's great because you do not have to make any choice. But if something goes wrong, if the ventilator is not synchronizing correctly, okay. you cannot do anything because it is a decision it's taken limited, by the algorithm. Limited. So there is an advantage, but on the other side, it's not so, it's not so easy. Point is, this is the way I explain it. <laughs> Not know it, of course. The, the first thing I say is that we have two kind of approach. The first one is CPAP. In CPAP, there is no interaction between the patient and the machine, yes. or there is no interaction between within, between the patient and the device. Any kind of device, ventilator, flow generator, venturi uh, system. The, the flow is running inside the element regardless of what the patient is doing. Yeah. Okay. It's continuous. It's, it's continuous. When you set it, it's going to stay there all exactly. the time. Exactly. It's uh, and the patient will just take what he needs mm -hmm. from inside the element. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if the flow is too high. For example, if you have 100 liters, 150 liters, this is not the point. The point is just the temperature, the, the pressure itself. Okay. In this case, the biggest is and the softer is the helmet, the best. The CPAP you will obtain, the, the, the better is the comfort of the patient. And the more stable pressure. And the, and the stable is much more During the breathing cycle. So, if you move to non invasive ventilation, it is obvious that there is a kind of communication between the patient and the ventilator. And at this stage, having a compliant device becomes a problem. So you, you need to find a way to keep the advantages of the helmet, softness and uh, soft the material, uh, no leakage and all. More the rigid, features. more rigid. Pattern. In a much more rigid device. So uh, even when much I'm, more rigid and smaller. Even now, when I'm touching mm -hmm. the material, mm -hmm. I can feel it that we can a helmet, it. helmet that is NIV. The neck collar is much thinner yeah, 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 yeah. and more yes. rigid in the yeah. NAV helmet, which is a pressure support ventilation helmet, versus the helmet that was used for the CPAP therapy. Because again, this stretchy, more stretchy and thinner neck seal will actually make that balloon effect. Where in a and I need mean how much you don't we, want that. Yeah, we tried to limit the you volume effect. Yes, yeah. to be as more stiff, more rigid, less compliant. Definitely, helmet. definitely. So even the cord itself is a little bit more also rigid. Also more rigid than the in the helmet that is used for the CPAP therapy. Perfect. This is to keep keep this okay. more stable. Yeah, yeah, to make the structure more stable and rigid. Okay, and to keep stable and fixated the connectors because if you connect the two mm -hmm. by the ear, apart from the fact that it's, it's in front of the ear of the patient, so it can be noisy, but this is not the point. If you have the connectors here and run one here, okay, when you go up with the pressure inside, the, the connector will do something like this, and then when the patient inspires and pressure goes down. Connect to remove like this. So, so this can confuse the ventilator. Definitely. When Definitely. it um, will be recognized as, as a trigger so, by the ventilator. So then this um, the machine will not read the patient signal if he's taking a breath now or he's finishing the breath. Yeah, it can mislead the ventilator. Mislead the ventilator. So this is the why a synchrony user happens. The, the helmet was invented. Uh, we thought, they thought that the, the CO2 was higher or around the neck or around the head of the patient. So having 
the connection in this position can help the washout. But now we know the CO2 is in this area of the helmet, so having the connectors here is better. What is important to, to consider is the fact that if you put a filter in line, this is not the case of the non-invasive ventilation. If you are doing, for example, CPAP, CPAP. and you put the filter in line with the, with the peep valve, the value you are reading here is lower than the actual peep inside yeah. the helmet. You have to add approximately three to four centimeters of water. Yeah. So always trust the manometer, never trust the peep too just, much, let's yeah. say, the indication on the peep belt. Because all the peep belts, not only this one, all are... Uh, mm, Inaccurate, let's yeah, say. Yeah, um, they are tested and calibrated on the bench. Mm -hmm. So they, the indication is just to help you to take, to find a position, mm -hmm. but the, the real pressure inside the helmet is really, it's, uh, has to be read on the mount. Plus it will depend on the flow that you're giving to the patient. And this is again, this is only for the helmet CPAP setup. Also what is nice about the manometer, you will know if there is too much fluctuation in the pressure when patient is uh, inhaling and ex exhaling, you know that there is not enough flow in the helmet. So you want it to increase the flow to make that fluctuation as low as possible. Uh, this is the monitoring system. This is the Venturi system. Okay. So it's two separate things. They are two separate things because this one is just pneumatic. Mm -hmm. So it works regardless from the, 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 regardless from the connection to the power supply, it works because it's just pneumatic. Okay. And you can see it's really silent or noisy just because we use filter smartware, okay? As a, the Venturi system is exactly like any other Venturi system, it's just a matter of performance. Okay. Here we have a Venturi system that can multiply the flow uh, by 10 times mm -hmm. so we can reach approximately 150 liters per minute as a maximum flow so this is where you have high pressure uh, so this is where you connect oxygen exactly. supply and uh, this hole actually will suck in all the ambient air and create that flow that is exiting, that is exiting from, from, from the front of the device yeah, yeah. And, uh, so now we're going to connect it to the Oh, yes. yes, okay, you open this, and let's try to see. Roberto, can you help me with um, and the, the positioning of the helmet, always with the hood open, it's... Uh, yeah. So this is the hardest part, if people usually, the first time users will complain, it's like, it's so hard to put it down. Well, we have bye, bye, bye. two people, it's okay. actually Prima, la not oh, okay. so hard. As not, yeah, it's not so complicated. As you can see, this is a large size, which is big for you, mm -hmm. but still I'm pretty confident that you will, yeah, it will work. It's what we were saying before. This is the, the peep generated only by the filter. This is the four, and you do not have a peep valve. Yeah, and I don't have a peep valve. And you do not have a peep valve. Okay. And we can close it a little bit. Now it's seven. Okay, eight to nine. It's noisy. This is... Okay. Let me close it. Okay, now you have the same pressure inside the element. Is this less noisy than this one or you don't see a big difference? It's different. It's different. But it's very, uh, it's like a white noise, you know? Ah, okay, yes. It is uh, something that doesn't bother you very much. And typical babies inside fell asleep. And they, so they, they... now you can hear me well when I'm talking. Yeah, pretty well. Pretty well. Can, and, and we are working with 100 liters of flow. I mean, the flow is very high. So if we go up with the flow without modifying the peep, you will see we will go up with the pressure as well. This is the flow. I go. You 
see the pip is going to from eight to nine just because i'm pushing much more air inside the element okay now the flow is 120 So this is what we have, a setup. We have a seatback helmet, we have a filter, and now I'm just gonna take the peep valve off because again, filter will be around three, four centimeters of water uh, pressure. This is the manometer. It's just the accessory or it can be built in in a helmet, it depends. This is where we have the smooth bore tubing to make sure it's not noisy. Venturi system and we are going to connect this to the gas source, right? So we have uh, two oxygen yeah. two oxygen uh, regulators. The blue one will be the engine. So open the blue line, you will start with an, you will make the venturi generate the nile flow. Playing with the white, you increase the FIOD. Okay, so one is the driver and the other one is just the en enricher. Yes. Of the, of so the this system. is the A connector, A. which is going to uh, increase the flow. Mm -hmm. And this is the B connector that's going to increase the, or decrease the FIO2 exactly. based on the setting. So I'm going to turn it on and it's going to be noisy. Again, because of the Venturi effect, it is noisy. And this is why we put the filter here. So it reduces the noise going into the helmet. So helmet doesn't make noise, it just amplifies the noise. So you wanna make sure that uh, for the patient comfort you have a muffler, in this case, is the filter. This is uh, 10 liters per minute uh, flow on a regulator will create 80 liters per minute flow in a helmet. Yeah. Uh, so we have a manometer. Now we can change the oxygen based again yeah. on a formula, what FIOQ you want it to create, and it can go up to 60%. That's already okay. And pressure is okay. And I can close the peep valve and see the manometer is moving up and down, and we have to we have to check that it, it is stable enough. When the helmet gets inflated, it starts to rise up because of the pressure. So these loops can be used to add another strap. Exactly, you can open and it. You can yeah. just open it and just uh, go through the loop, close it, right? Exactly. So now you can connect this to the pad or, or you can connect it to a weight. To the weight, like a, a bottle of water or whatever. And that's going to push the helmet down from the top instead of just moving down. From below. And you can you can release the pressure from, from the, the axillary area exactly. where uh, the skin breakdown happens. Especially you have a long term, long -term mm -hmm. uh, helmet users. I think that is really important as you said is the the learning curve, the, the yes. education. Because uh, uh, everybody uh, we, we have this mindset do not put the head into a plastic bag. So yeah. Each time you show an alternative to the patient, say it would be like this or this, the patient will always go to this. Yeah, it's just the same because problem. it's much more long. And um, also the nurses sometimes say, okay, I, yeah, I can try this, but I will never put my head inside that. Uh, so having the perfect knowledge of how to position a helmet, uh, explaining what's going on, uh, being able to answer the patient. Because the patient will say, okay, I will suffocate it inside, or uh, how can I open it, or uh, how, is the, how much flow I need, what is going on if I, uh, if I see foam inside. So you need to be able to give a good answer to all these questions to make before the patient, the yeah, before starting. Otherwise you start, something happens, like with any device, not only with the helmet, 
And if you are not able to make the patient confident that you have everything under control, the patient will immediately react to using the device. And also for the nurse, it's much easier than say, okay, that's too difficult for me, I take yes. it away. So, so definitely, the confidence the in the clinician yeah. will definitely increase uh, the trust and the patient uh, will develop. When they see that the clinician knows what he's doing, they, they have answers for uh, questions the patient has. And also they know how to troubleshoot in case if something doesn't work. So they know that they are in a safe position. Yeah. What, safe what, what, what I'm saying, saying is that if I have uh, somebody like you in front of me trying to put a helmet on my head, I feel confident, confident because you are the first one trusting the device. Okay, this is a key point. If, if you as a doctor, as a nurse, or a spiritual therapist, you are not really comfortable with the device and you approach a patient, it's, it is yeah. very, very, very probable that you something. Yeah, then the goes. fear is transferred to the exactly. patient and now and the patient on top of a respiratory distress and, uh, and anxiety yeah. and uh, uh, you know, stress. We adding another fear, which is uh, you know, no confidence in that you know operator who's going to put that's, this. That's that's really 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 yeah. important. And another thing that we can say that you have always to wait a little bit to see the feet stabilizing. I mean, yeah. when you put a helmet, the reaction is oh. typically taking Please. big breath, yeah, big yeah. breath. Okay, so you have to let you have to leave the patient to calm down a little bit yes. uh, for fifty to twenty minutes. So you want to calm down so you you can have that uh, you know stable breathing uh, and uh, so you can make best adjustment in the flow and the peep. That's when we talk about the helmet CPAP therapy. Also, uh, you have to do the same when you're doing the pressure support ventilation with the helmet. So for the first I would say 30 minutes, you want it to be in the patient room with the patient, uh, watching the patient, adjusting the settings, and then definitely do the other um, monitoring the patient and the device to make sure that you get uh, the best setting for this patient. Yes. Um, so, yeah, you need to be there and adjust because. For example, it is it is good to have a very high flow because a very high flow can solve a lot of problems. Yeah. But the very high flow generates a lot of noise. Yeah. So due to the fact that the noise is one of the things immediately recognized by the patient, if it's possible to decrease a little bit the flow, like yeah. we did with and you. And have the same effect. And then the same effect, why not? So start with an high flow, see if the money meter is uh, or the the pressure, let's say, is stable, whatever you read it, you know, on the manometer, on the monitor, whatever. See if, uh, if the pressure is very stable, decrease a little bit. Still can decrease have a little a bit. And when you see it moving, okay, that's the point where you can yeah, stop. But this not too much. Tight, right? No, not too much. Not too much, otherwise the pressure inside is no more stable and the patient will feel lack of air. And this is again when you have to tell the patient that now it's going to be noisy, so stay with me. We're gonna adjust the noise when we see how the helmet works because otherwise the patient will think, oh my god, do I have I to stay never... in that noise for a week? No, I don't want to do it. So again, expectations, what are those and so patient knows what are the next step, what we're gonna do, what options we have. Even uh, talking about breaks, you want to make sure that the first at least six, eight hours you don't want it to interrupt an IV. You want to see, you know, how the patient is doing. You want to help them to decrease that work of breathing and, uh, you know, adjust the FiO2 if needed. So we know that I probably will not get food <laughs> in the first hours yes, of treatment. But, but then later you will tell them we're going to have that quick break where you can eat. They and will, and yeah, and they will. They will stop talking after a while. Yeah. The first reaction when you are inside the helmet is okay. Shut up. Uh -huh. But you can speak. I mean, yeah. I, we can yeah, hear you from hear from you. outside, and you can hear me from inside. And so after a while, this becomes more normal. They can uh, 
look at the, the mobile phone, they can speak with the parents when they call. This is a big advantage in comparison with a mask. Yeah. Yeah. Big, big advantage. Again, the comfort level um, and uh, yeah, the comfort. Yeah, and there is another thing that is not maybe is not so easy to be explained, but I try you have a, a good dilution of the CO2, the expired CO2 inside a much better than inside a mask. Mm -hmm. When you are why, when you are inside a mask, you expire your CO2 in a small volume. Yeah. Alpha liter, etc. Okay. So if there is something wrong, let's say the flow is not sufficient, and you take mm -hmm. the following breath, you take all oh, more CO2 from here. Definitely. Better. Because because you have no way to to dilute, to dilute the CO2. Here, the CO2 you expire to 100, 300 milliliters a minute, this is more or less the volume of CO2 mm -hmm. the patient expires, 400 milliliters, is diluted in 6 liters. So even if you have uh, to, you, have, you need to adjust the flow, maybe uh, the flow is a little bit too low and you will come back in 5 minutes to increase the flow, in these 5 minutes you take advantage of the dilution the patient can have inside the helmet, which is something that doesn't happen inside yeah. that mask. So with this uh, uh, mask, and uh, this is total... No, this, this, this is a special one. Do not use this one to, to make the example what I'm breathing, because we separate the inlet from outlet also okay, the mask. so this is also well, helps with CO2. The, 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 the best uh, NAV helmet uh, could be in glass. Yes. The best sip up helmet must like be in a very soft uh, kiss balloon. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's completely different. When you cast the venturi, you use filter, you use the noises. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Different noises. And different piece. Yeah. 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 What, what is the difference in the contact inside? If you manage in the right way or in the wrong way, it changes completely. Results, performance, and the. the, the, the for a longer time that the patient can remain inside. Mm -hmm. This is part of the failure. Because the advantage of them compared to the mask is the comfort. Yes. If you destroy the comfort with the wrong way to use it, you, 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 you miss the focus of them. If you are a, a seller of uh, shoes, you, take, you maintain in your shop only 41, 42, and 43? No, you need from the 36, to the 46, because every patient is different. So it doesn't make sense that with three sides you cover all the patients, from the obese to the aged. It doesn't make sense. The cost is the same, it's only, only code, part, code, number to insert in the document. It doesn't make sense. Why you have to sell only three sides? We have nine sides. This is the concept of this particular product. Also in Italy, since the beginning, uh, ah, no, the doctors are not interested in the CPAP, we are interested in non-invalidity, yeah. should pressure support. Yeah, so it's my not, goal is to make sure that people yeah. start using helmets. CPAP. And the is, the is uh, you, you, walk, you walk around uh, yourself uh, and uh, you don't want to use a bicycle because you want to use the motor, but you don't know how to use the how bicycle, you how you can use the motor. Yes, yes. Not possible. And this is the problem. Try to use immediately the helmet, the NAD, without the experience to manage the helmet, Sure, it's very good. This is something that has to be clear because uh, makes this, uh, all the matters relevant to suffocation disappear because they say, okay, I'm inside of a volume, I have a margin in here. Uh, nothing will happen if the flow stops running, nothing will happen if I uh, see if I. If the flow is not sufficient for a while, I have the possibility to bring the inside. Yeah, yeah. The, the main problem uh, if something, if you have a disconnection, the problem is that I remove, I take away from the patient the support given by the setup yeah. and the pressure and the oxygen. So, the so this will kill the patient. Not, not the fact that it's inside the helmet, not at all. So it's the same like with the face mask. If it gets disconnected, you yeah. just stop. The therapy is stopped, and now your patient, instead of breathing, you have sixty percent will be one and uh, all the other things. It is funny. In the helmet, you still have more oxygen actually, so you have a little bit more time 
still uh, yeah. respond you know, okay. for the do something. And it is funny how they are so worried about uh, suffocation and asphyxia disconnection with the helmet and they never ask the same question when you show them a mask. Yeah. I would prefer to be it's inside a helmet with a tube for half an hour. I take if I did, if I put your face inside the mask with a tube, 150 uh, centimeters disconnected at the machine side. Believe me, I would Try have a better time inside a helmet than you inside a mask yeah. for sure. Yeah. You have very short time to do something. I have much more time. So uh, it's once again it's a mindset. It's, it's something they. It's, yeah, so this is something that you wanted to um, you wanted to follow the science, not the assumptions. <laughs> um, so again, definitely there's a lot of science behind it that will take that fear away and that 